A few weeks ago, I put together an entire gaming setup based around Amazon's number one best-selling products. And you guys were like, what the f***, Kyle? How could you put together this gaming setup and not include the gaming PC? And I was like, listen up, you motherfuckers. You're right. You're right. I am a piece of s***, which is why I'm doing it now, okay? So chill the f*** out. Before we continue, special thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Keeps is unmatched when it comes to hair loss prevention for men because they offer the most effective solution for keeping as much of your hair as possible. Proven by the millions of guys Keeps has already saved from going bald. Their service is also super convenient. You can meet discreetly with a doctor online and have products sent to your doorstep every three months so you never have to go to the outside place. Currently, there's only two FDA approved hair loss products on the market and Keeps offers generic versions for both, making them safe and effective without breaking the bank. Statistically, most men experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35, but taking preemptive measures is the best method of saving your hair, especially since it can take up to six months to see results. Just go to keeps.com slash bitwit or click the link in the description below to receive 50% off your first order. Give your hair the love it deserves and try Keeps today. So just like with the gaming setup, I've chosen all the parts for this build based on the number one best-selling products or components of each component category. So the best-selling CPU, GPU, motherboard, case, and all that jazz. This is gonna be an interesting build because it comes at a weird time where we have a bunch of new hardware on the horizon. Right around the corner, we've got Ryzen 7000 CPUs coming out soon, RTX 40 series from Nvidia, stuff from Intel. So a lot of people might think that this build is already irrelevant because it's just gonna get replaced by a bunch of new hardware. But that doesn't mean that existing hardware is old or irrelevant just because new stuff comes out. And I wanna make that very clear in this video because a lot of people tend to think that. And I feel like that's just like the, the pressure of the industry, right? Something new comes out and you feel obsolete. You feel like the, the new shiny thing you just bought is now old and it sucks and, and it, there's something better out there. Yes, these products that are coming out are gonna be better, but they're also gonna be a lot more expensive. I mean, just look at how much graphics cards have dropped in price this year. They're actually finally kind of affordable. Took them long enough, but I think most of us would agree, better late than never. So if you're looking for solid performance, but the new hardware coming out doesn't exactly fit your budget, I think it's still worth having today's PC on your radar because it's essentially a system that's been assembled by the Amazon hive mind. And in order to be a number one best-selling product, as I mentioned in the previous video, these products need to have the absolute highest sales volume in their respective category, which means they're the most popular. They sold more units than any other competitors. There's something to be said about that, even though for the record, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a great product. Number one bestseller does not equal amazing product. There's a lot of number one best-selling products out there that are absolute shit, which is why as I'm building, I'm going to give you guys my honest feedback on each component that we're working with and let you know if it's a solid option or if there are better choices available. Comments build! Starting with the number one best-selling CPU on Amazon, the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. I knew it was going to be AMD. Um, that's just how things have been trending for a while now. I, I knew it was going to be AMD versus Intel, but I didn't know it was going to be the 5800X. I was thinking maybe the 5600X, you know, the Ryzen 5. Maybe people were uh, going with a, a slightly cheaper Ryzen chip, but it uh, seems like everyone's got the 8-core, you know, buying, buying up the 8-core, especially because it's come way down in price since it first launched. I think I got this for 250, 260 bucks um, about two weeks ago when I bought it. But of course, long after this chip launched, AMD released the 5800X 3D, which is currently the fastest gaming CPU until Ryzen 7000 series comes out. But the 5800X 3D is still a lot more expensive than the 5800X. I think it's going for like 420 right now. But uh, if I was, you know, recommending a CPU to a friend and they were torn between this and the, and the, uh, the X 3D, I would go for the 5800X. I, th I just think it's a better value. It's objectively a better value when you take a look at the, the price performance and stuff like that. 260 bucks for this thing is, is, is a great deal. So we're gonna be pairing that with the number one best-selling motherboard on Amazon, which is the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. And this works out perfectly, right? Because these parts are compatible. Thank God, I, I would have been in a pickle if they weren't. This could have easily been an Intel board. But I mean, if you think about it, if the number one best-selling CPU is AM4 based, then the number one best-selling motherboard probably is too. So this works out. Uh, I've used this board maybe once or twice before. I've never had really any issues with it. Um, X570 is maybe a little bit extra for most people, unless you're really looking for additional PCIe lanes and you're really gonna be utilizing those. B550 works just fine. You can get it for a lower price on average. But um, this is actually a really affordable X570 board. This is one of the cheapest, actually I would say this is the cheapest, best rated uh, X570 boards out there right now. It's only 200 bucks at the time of filming. 
and it's got a 12 plus two phase power design. One thing that you should look out for for, for X570 that I feel like is a shortcoming um, or a drawback versus B550 is that it has active cooling on the chipset. And a lot of these boards, I shouldn't say a lot, a number of X570 boards have been reported to have noisy chipset fans. Uh, I don't remember if this one's loud or not. Uh, we're gonna test it though. I'll, I'll, when we fire up the, the finished build, I'll let you guys know if this is uh, too noisy or not. Um, but uh, it's a nice board, it's very attractive. PCI Gen 4 support, DDR4 support, even though PCI Gen 5 and DDR5 are already here and they're gonna be even more prevalent once AM5 comes out. Uh, but one thing that you can look forward to here is that you don't have to spend extra on DDR5 memory, which is still kind of pricey. DDR4 memory is definitely cheaper across the board, um, which brings us to the number one best-selling memory kit, Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4. This is uh, 16 gigs uh, per DIMM, 32 gigs total, um, at DDR4 3600. Um, these are good sticks. I've used th this memory kit probably more than any other DDR4 kit. Maybe apart from like the G-Skill Ripjaws 5. I I've used those a crap ton, but this is a close second at the very least. Just the fact that they're extremely low profile means that they're gonna be super compatible, if not 100% compatible with any cooler that you put in here. This also makes these uh, a crowd favorite and a personal favorite of mine um, for small form factor builds. Love these sticks. I'm not putting any mechanical storage in this build. We're just gonna go straight SSD. So the number one best-selling SSD is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe M.2, uh, the one terabyte model to be, to be exact, and that's what we have here. And this is actually a PCIe Gen 3 drive. I was kind of hoping that the number one bestseller would be PCIe Gen 4, but it makes sense because this is a bit cheaper and Gen 3's been a around a lot longer. Still a fantastic drive. Samsung's always been reliable when it comes to storage, at least in my experience. Uh, and I've used this drive so many times without having any issues. I did not pull out an M.2 screw though. Okay, we gotta install a little standoff first, 2280. Uh, so, so far I would say Amazon's doing a killer job. All these parts are really solid. Again, I'll verify uh, later if this, this uh, chipset fan's noisy or not, but everything else is looking really good. All righty toity Amazon's cooler of choice is the Master Liquid ML240L V2 RGB. That name is long and stupid and I hate it. The last time I used a Cooler Master AIO, it was an awful mounting experience. Like the mounting system was Crap. But cut them some slack, Kyle. They lost that lawsuit to Ace Tech years ago and had to change their mounting system. I don't give a shit. They should have come up with something better. And that's why I haven't used their CLCs in what feels like years uh, until today, because I kind of have to based on the nature of this video. Um, but I just looked at the instruction manual and they changed the mounting system. It's updated now. I don't know when they did this because again, it's been so long since I've used one, but it's a lot better. It's a lot better and I'm so happy. You know, as pissed off as I was at their shitty coolers, uh, for a long time. I was sad that it was just one less option that I felt like I could really pick uh, for builds or, or that I wanted to work with. It limited my options. So now I feel like, oh, I could start using Cooler Master coolers again. Tasty, tasty, thermal pasty. Burp, 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 burp. There we go. The pump block looks really nice with our board too. It's just super matte. All right, I'm gonna slap these RGB fans on and then we'll move on to the number one best-selling case, which is the Corsair 4000D Airflow. What a case, such a, such a good mid-tower. Uh, I didn't really like the way this case looked at first when, when it first came out. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the triangular pattern at the front panel. Performance aside, obviously the airflow is fantastic, but I just didn't like the aesthetics all that much, but it's really grown on me in the last few months. The more I've been using it, the more I see it, I'm just like, you know what, it's classy. So I've really warmed up to the case cosmetic wise, but I've always liked this case just for its performance and its features. It has really good airflow, obviously, as the name suggests. The mesh panel at the front is wide open and it lets the fans breathe really well. The cable management is fantastic also. Lots of room for activities, but it is not an oversized mid-tower. It's, it's a relatively uh, average size, I would say, but I never feel too claustrophobic working in it. Okay, I meant to put these fans on the radiator off camera, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't because I wanted to point out that I really like the fact that these screws are thumb screws. I know Cooler Master's been doing this for a long time on their AIOs, but it just dawned on me how helpful this is. Mounting radiator fans is kind of a tedious task, especially when you've got, you know, two or three fans. It's what, eight to 12 screws that you gotta thread. And this just makes it a lot nicer. It seems Cooler Master is definitely winning me over in this video. All right, power supply, Corsair RM850X. 80 plus gold certified, fully modular design, quiet fan, built like a tank. These are beefy units. I've been using them since they came out and I don't really have any complaints. They've always served me well. Also, I think that brings a total of Corsair parts in this build to three. 
We got the case, the power supply, and the memory. So uh, almost half of this build is Corsair, and that's all you know Amazon's choice. So. Good job, guys. Good job, Corsair team. Keep crushing it. The stock cables are black, which is a million times better than that awful ketchup and mustard business. Uh, we don't really see that too much anymore unless it's on super budget power supplies, thank God. But that being said, I couldn't help but pick up the number one best-selling PC sleeved cable kit, which happened to be from Asia Horse. I've used Asia Horse cables more than any other sleeve cable kit maker out there. And there's a reason for that. The quality is straight up banging for the price. It really is. These are cheap cables, but they don't feel cheap. They train well, and they don't have any weird kinks in them like cheaper cable sets do. Uh, they also stepped up their game, Asia Horse. I recently realized that they replaced out their old uh, cable trainers, so the, the cable combs for nicer ones. These are much nicer cable combs, and uh, they work great, they look nicer. Um, they're just better quality overall. I'll keep saying this till the day I die. Sleep cable extensions are the quickest, easiest, and cheapest way to upgrade the appearance of your system. It's just, it's just how it is. I've used extensions from Antec, from Easy DIY, up here. I mean, you name it. I've used a bunch over the years and I keep coming back to Asia Horse. They remain my favorite extension brand. Uh, so it was validating to see that they were uh, number one bestseller. I think I have all the cables I need plugged in here finally. Do I need, is this SATA? This is the RGB on the, the AIO. Molex! Why, why, okay, Cooler Master, you were doing so well. You were doing so well, I was giving you points. You had me in the first half. Who's using Molex? It's 2022. If you have Molex in your system, it's probably just one device that's still using, like this AIO. It's one device that's still living in the past and busting out the extra cable is just half the battle. You still gotta use Molex, which is the most frustrating and non-functional connector I have ever come across in my years of building. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work 85,000% of the time. Stupid pins going to the stupid holes. <sighs> All right. And the final component of this build and the number one best-selling graphics card voted by the wallets of Amazon customers everywhere is the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming Z Trio. Now, this is not to be confused with the Gaming X Trio, although they're very similar. The only difference being is that the Gaming Z Trio is a bit more heavily factory overclocked out of the box. Uh, this is a really good card. I've used it a million times. The cooler is great. This twin frozer, is it tri-frozer? I don't know what the hell they're calling it now. It's cool, it's quiet. It's actually a very quiet card, even on an RTX 3080, because uh, they have the same cooler on the 3070 as well. But even for a 3080, it is very cool and quiet, um, which I really appreciate. Obviously, it's got zero decibel fans, so they only ramp up if the GPUs under a certain load. Some nice touches of RGB throughout the card. It's not overly done. Uh, you have three eight pin power plugs. So it is kind of a power hog, uh, but that's probably gonna pale in comparison to the RTX 40 series once that's out. All right, I'm gonna install this now, finish up the build. We'll fire it up and see how she runs. All right, our number one best-selling gaming PC is up and running. She's purring like a kitten. Everything's going really smoothly, but a couple things that I wanted to mention that I forgot to say earlier about the motherboard. There is one thing about it that I, that I missed. It doesn't have USB-C. There's no USB-C header on it. It's, it's an older X570 board, I think one of the earlier models that came out, and it is a budget X570 board as well. So connectivity isn't as much as you'd find on a more expensive option. So unfortunately, I don't think this board is a good pairing for this particular case. The 4000D Airflow has a USB-C port on the front panel, which we can't use because we don't have that header on the board. So something to be aware of there. Two more things I forgot to mention earlier. The case does come included with two 120 millimeter fans. There's one at the rear and one at the front. I've left them in their default positions and put the radiator uh, of our AIO at the top of the case. The other thing was we do have a bit of GPU sag on that RTX 3080 Trident Z, no, Trident Z. Gaming Z Trio, Gaming Z Trio. Uh, there is a bit of GPU sag, but the card does come included with a pretty beefy sag bracket for you to install. I didn't use it here. Instead, I used my traditional lazy method of cutting a piece of PET tubing to size and then sticking it under the GPU, which is just so cheap and effective. How about them video games? I'm playing Halo Infinite at 4K right now at high settings, not ultra, but high. Uh, I tried playing it on Ultra, and unfortunately we weren't getting over 60 FPS. High 50s, mid to high 50s, but I wanted to show you guys at least, uh, you know, over 60 FPS on average. And here we go, 60 to 70 FPS. The game looks beautiful. You don't really notice a huge performance or a huge quality drop going from Ultra to high, in my opinion. It's almost indistinguishable if someone told me this was Ultra, I would believe them. Uh, the gameplay is super smooth. You can see we've got Afterburner up there in the top left corner. Check out that HUD. We've got 74C on the GPU doing just fine there, uh, 66C on the CPU, 
Obviously, we're not utilizing the CPU nearly as much as, as the GPU, but this is still a fairly CPU intensive game. I mean, 50 to 60% is, that's more usage than you typically see in your average title. Uh, earlier, I mentioned concerns about the chipset fan potentially being noisy, but I am happy to report that it is not. I can't hear it over the other fans in the system. It's pretty darn quiet. In fact, the whole system is very quiet, which is surprising because we have that open front panel, that mesh front panel on the 4000D airflow. So there's a lot of sound leakage potential, but you don't really hear it all that much. It's a very quiet system. Oh God, I'm out of ammo. This is not, this is not good. Hold on. Well, let me use this as an opportunity to stall and switch this over to, let's say 1920 by 1080. Look at that, 120 FPS, woo -wee. Now I'm upset that I'm gaming on a 60 Hertz monitor. But uh, yeah, the, the system is absolutely awesome. It's super solid. I mean, even though the parts in here are, some of the parts in here, like the CPU and GPU are roughly two years old now, this thing's gonna go for another three, four years easy, if not longer. So again, it kind of just defeats that argument that these current gen parts are now irrelevant somehow because newer ones are coming out. Uh, and especially if you can get these parts for as cheap as they've ever been, that's even more reason to consider it. But that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Let me know if you liked it by tossing a like on the video before you go and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. I will see you guys in the next video.